Hello! Hello! Hi! Hello! Hi everyone! We're not meant there to is be a, here! There <laughs> is a surprising amount of people for a talk we literally just like promptly announced like a day before. Alright! Let's get started. Um... We're gonna be talking about a bunch of stuff in this, but it's all gonna be mostly related to how we got here and, you know, the endeavors we got to get here. And, at the end, if you stick along, is a little treat you get yourself. Um, a secret slide that I prepared. Um, we're gonna have fun. As a quick disclaimer before we begin, I mean no harm to anyone in this. We absolutely, like the entire team, we love BlanketCon. It's been great fun. We've had an amazing time. We don't do this to humiliate, humiliate anyone. We don't do this to, you know, make fun of like, oh, look at how little time they had. We fucking love this place. We just did this out of fun. We just did this out of enjoyment. That's all. Uh, so who even are we, really? Um, let's start with me. I'm Jill. I kickstarted this whole thing by going on a very, very lengthy shard hunt. Uh, I'm Zydra. I'm kind of the catalyst to the escalation of this entire thing. <laughs> and I am Marco. I tagged along for the entire thing and provided various different ideas during the whole ordeal. So, what... What happened? <laughs> As with all great things, again, this starts with shard hunting. And, um... Yeah, I did actually get all obtainable shards, and plus one more that I'll mention later on. Uh, the thing that allowed a lot of this to happen, and a lot of this to begin, was the Yitrik Rifle. Now, the Yitrik Rifle um, has a bunch of modes, here, sorry. and the one we'll be using is the Teleport mode, which I happen to be able to give a live demonstration on. Um, if you point a Yitrik gun at a wall, you can just like that go through it. Now, of course, this is easier because this is glass, and glass has much more permissive um, hitboxes for pushing you out. But this allowed us to do a little bit of tomfoolery in the Bing Bing Wahoo Now, I was looking for shards, and I was looking for the secret shard in Bing Bing Wahoo's booth, which, by the way, no offense, it kind of sucks. <laughs> um, I happened to stumble upon a very funny very funny looking house and i like was wondering like surely that that must be where the secret shard is i couldn't find it anywhere else so i go ahead and teleport in and what do i find um there's an entire like setup here with a chest and a radio transceiver that i could completely edit it was the radio um it started with the radio but we'll get there um what what happened what what happened here what why did this happen the quick answer is because blink and con is silly in how it functions usually servers are ran on you know server side stuff like paper or spigot uh but blink and con is a little quirky in that it uses quilt because you know it's a modded convert con convention um and usually the way static sites static um static servers like this work is they have area claims and they literally server side prevents you from touching anything but this is well this is adventure mode so that booths can have you know interactability interactability you can just like do quick little demos it's cool it works out in paper nothing goes wrong but it did end up allowing a lot of very funny things to happen all right, so this brings me to the utility belt incident. Uh, later that evening, I was just kind of... I, I made a little discovery about the booth uh, for the utility belt mod. And the cave area that holds the challenge shard actually temporarily puts you in survival mode while you are uh, uh, inside of it. So, of course, um, I did a little decorating <laughs> inside of the cave. And... <laughs> 
my best logical course of action was to make a silly little jukebox uh, where it would constantly play the portal radio music on loop uh, <laughs> with very scrunched together redstone. And you may have noticed the computer in the previous screenshot. We have a bit of a question. Someone at some point discovered this game and put a malware on the PC that would continuously print penis with no real way to turn it off. It would start on boot. We have no idea who did this. The only other thing they did was find the actual jukebox device and instead of tampering with it in any way, just put in another disc and close it back up. So, um, what proceeded afterwards is I overheard, or Ryder Zydra overheard a rumor saying if you die in survival mode, you will also respawn in survival mode. And we decided to, to test it out, and of course it fucking works. So it all goes downhill from here, as you might expect. Uh, the only thing we did at the time was just change a random radio we found to channel 16, which continuously plays cave noises, and I believe still does play cave noises to this day. Uh, the... The... thing we tried afterwards was Zydra thought, okay, when you go into the stage, you get teleported out. Like, we're standing right here and we're not getting teleported out, why is that? The reason that, that Zydra theorized this might be happening is because we're in adventure mode. So, Zydra tried to clip in with quite a bit of finessing with the Yitra rifle, and... Oh, there's a lot back there! <laughs> As you might find out, we have managed to make it up to the stage. And that was quite terrifying, because not only were we in complete survival mode access at this point, which would let us destroy anything we wanted, but we now had stage access, including all of the contraband backstage. So naturally, the course of action was to take everything from there and use the printer to duplicate it, then put it back as if nothing had ever happened. And what even is the printer is, uh, it's a mod that has its own booth, in which there is a specific block that lets you duplicate any item you put in using your experience, and that has proved to be very, very useful in our ordeals. And um, now, <clears throat> while I was while we were doing all of this, I had a silly little idea. So I thought, what if somewhere, somehow on this server, there was a generated end portal that you know you could maybe uh, <laughs> maybe activate? And I thought, nah, that's silly. Except that I found the over booth, which for some reason inside of it which was also made without permission had an end portal that was unlit so i went around got a few resources and i kind of maybe activated the end portal it fucking worked so uh <laughs> we uh <laughs> Now, this is extremely funny, and- A drop of continuity?! Yeah. <laughs> and... What was- was- was this even at all useful? And turns out, yes, because we could actually obtain drops of continuity that function, which could give you quite a bit of items, including Elytra's, Shulker boxes, Yitra rifles that didn't have any NBT tags on them, and therefore could be used outside of the Yitter booth, as well as computers and various, various other things. So at this point, we were basically becoming gods, and the powers we had became a bit scary. And by that point, we were still operating in that exact same cave in the utility belt booth that we had discovered, and that place has a shard in it that isn't extra really secret. So Jill took it upon herself to create a completely secret 2B2T style base dug under the ocean completely offshore near the border. The benefits of it were pretty numerous. At this point we had all the materials required to make our own printer and then use the printer inside the booth to duplicate our printers to make more printers and we had an entire duping station in our base. And we also additionally used packages to 
hyper pack items and dupe them at high efficiency. This also then led us to create Elytras and Fireworks. Zydra had just randomly found a Celestium Elytra in some random chest on the map, and then Jill just decided to randomly test a Function and Void Effector, we had that at the point by the way, and just so happened to discover a functioning mob spawner with gunpowder in the chest that lets us let us create fireworks for said Elytra. We also, using the drops of continuity, created a functioning Yitrick rifle without the NBT tags, and naturally, as the best idea, decided to test it in our own base, which had led to the creation of the pit. We were, in fact, so stacked on items from, from drops of continuity and duping that we could, at this point, decorate our base completely. Uh, so, at this point, I was also, um, you know, getting up to date with shard hunting. I got all the obtainable shards and I was happy with myself. I brought it up in the Discord, and someone told, okay, they're... Fabulously Optimized has two un like, unobtainable shards, but someone did manage to see the room where you get that, and I was like, wait, there's no way. Does that mean I could potentially get in there with, like, a Void Effector? And so, I tried that, and I found the fucking treasure trove of goodies. This double chest contained an item for the shard that I could actually place in the world, multiple command blocks with with commands in them, a debug stick, a mass enchanted fishing rod. There was so fucking much in here. How did I stumble upon this? However, the bad news is that most of this only functions as just souvenirs because you can't actually use them in survival mode, which is deeply upsetting. Uh, I did the logical course of action, of course. I duped all the above, put them back in the chest, placed the shard in there, and then, I'm pretty sure, became the first person after the event to get this shard by fucking placing it down. And after this, I figured, okay, we could probably also place down the command blocks in some way. Marco thought up the idea of what if there was a modded item that could somehow let you place down blocks. So, one of the only things that I could think of was the continuous shifter. It can actually place down blocks without you having the ability to place them down. But unfortunately, they don't preserve NDT data. So they also just ended up being souvenirs at the base. I also tried to use the continuous shifter on a shard, and that got us the fucking missing no shard. The pit will never be the same after these incidents. Oh, uh, so, okay, that's cool. But how did we actually get here? Well, uh, the logistics of holding an unauthorized talk is uh, that we will, you, will need, you will need to get a slides for the talk that you will write into the backstage, a microphone to speak to, and a computer, pocket computer that can control the stage. Uh, we have all of those readies, except except for the slides, which turned out to be a bit of a complication. But first, what even are the slides anyways? What is the system powering them? The way the slides worked was they were just a JSON hosted URL, and you would pass in a written book with the URL. The JSON then contain, contained all the slides and the image URLs. One small issue. The thing that displays the slides, picture sign, um, does not actually allow any domains to host images besides the blanket cod CDN. And we had struggled with that a lot. We had thought that this would be a major roadblock, but turns out the solution was completely under our noses. There is literally just a bot that lets you upload images. So that was it then. We could host our own talk. Before we proceed with the actual talk, Let's talk missed opportunities, because this could have somehow gone worse. When examining the slide system closer, we found out that it has a field for commands, which, what the fuck do you mean? What do you mean we can run arbitrary commands? Bummer, there's a hash. There's an HMAC hash that 
just completely prevents you from writing your own arbitrary commands. Uh, so I went in and looked at how this is implemented. What the fuck do you mean it's SHA-1? What do you mean it's SHA-1? It is fe It is completely feasible to brute force this. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? So naturally we tried to brute force it. We downloaded all of the slides by literally just going backstage, taking out all of the pre-written books, then screenshotting them and putting them through an OCR, and we got like, all the JSONs downloaded onto my computer. So why is this in missed opportunities, you might ask? None of the presentations use commands even once. <laughs> so all of that effort was gone to waste. Um, it's either that commands are completely disabled outright on the config, or the secret is unknown and may never be known, because we don't have any, H any HMAX to test this. This is a good yeah, thing um, for security. I think... <laughs> yeah, uh... I don't think anyone actually knew you could do commands in the books. Yeah, this was a good thing for security, but it's still very sad because I ended up making a single player replica of the system through the open source scripts and with a world downloader. So that's about it. That's how we got here. That's why that's how we're here. Um if you have any questions, which I forgot to enable the question system, excuse me. There you uh, go. There's a you broken funnel, let me it. fix this real quick. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. There was a funny thing to do with the conveyor systems, actually. When we were trying to smuggle the PCs back into the stage, we accidentally ended up dropping the pocket PC onto the conveyors, and create mods, conveyors don't despawn items. So it was just in public view, and we had to impromptu figure out how to get it out of there. Lamau. It was very funny. <laughs> it was great. So if you have I'm any not questions, sure grab whether a book to up you all or ban you all right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the dilemma we experienced with hosting this talk, because we were not yeah. sure if we would instantly get, like, just complete question marks in the ban, or, like... You know, just like, you know, what's going on right now. Well, I mean, like, it's the after party. We're legally not required to give a shit anymore. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think if even was, if the server like, burns down, it's not a big deal anymore. I am glad that it's that it was y'all who figured this out, because y'all actually have a good sense of humor. And I, uh... there are a lot of people who have been at the con who... I would, uh, nuke off the face of the earth if they did this. Right, um, first question. What exactly does a shard of continuity do? A shard of continuity is a block that the Yitter mod adds, which spawns at the bottom of end islands. Its whole thing is, like, it's used for a bunch of crafting recipes. Oh, no, so painting it is really funny. You should try it yourself. You should really try it yourself. You should really try it yourself. No, seriously, play... Please play with Itter in Survival. It is one of the best mods ever made. Yeah, if there's one thing you should take away from this talk, it's that you should probably play Itter. Um... Yeah. Drops of continuity, so unfortunately, don't let you just straight up get any item ever, but it does have a wide selection of things you can get. So it's sort of like a loot box where you, like, interact with it and gives you a random item? Yes, yeah, including the other official mods. name is Loot Box of Continuity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we are all still in survival. <laughs> this is correct. In fact, the best this is part how we is got that on once the you stage. go... Once you get into survival, I don't think you can switch back. We tried going back to the survival areas, they don't switch you back to adventure. Ah. Uh, now we've got to figure out how to make sure this doesn't happen next year, and I've actually had a few ideas for that, so... We'll see. So the next question... We uh, tried the car not staff with a command block? We actually haven't. We only tried it with a bronze block, which would summon lightning at any point. So... I can do a live, I can do a live demonstration. 
Oh, so there was some do kind of ominous, <laughs> suspicious lightning in the ocean, just randomly offshore on top of our base sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my hands. <laughs> Alright, is that all the questions? I believe that is all the questions. Um... Oh, no, okay. I'll, I'll wait. We will actually distribute uh, teleport papers to the base after the talk is over. You know what? Why not now? Give me Yo, a moment. Yo, what? Joe? Let me just... Here. I'm up for this. I'll just... Let me just straight up half position papers for this. You can grab them if you want. Go ahead. Don't teleport <laughs> oh, now. Wait until the talk is over, I but... Yeah, they got, gotta be... Yeah, I come, I'm coming in with a bunch more. If anyone else has missed the... Uh... I can give you a one. Okay. Oh, these are one-time use, but we couldn't figure out a more elegant solution. Again, we've been doing all of this in survival mode. We have received no help from staff except for that one time. The slide system supposedly broke down, but it was just me not handling the depot correctly. I guess we could dig a hole to the base, but also do you really want to travel to a remote place in the ocean and then sink down? Um, Anonymous says, the key is totally secret. Yes, I saw this in the source code, the default key is totally secret, and there's a big warning in the comments saying, like, do not fucking leak this, do not... You please read this carefully and and please change this. But I did try using it and no, it did not work. Very deeply sad. E for the command blocks, uh, for for the command execution stuff that I talked about in missed opportunities. Uh, we in survival mode we didn't really touch anything except in the base area. Uh, there were a few times where maybe we want a certain block or item, so we would steal the original, duplicate it with the printer, and then put it back where it used to be. Almost yeah, like mo nothing the ever most happened. That, the Just most that we ever grieved would fast. be... <laughs> the most that we ever grieved was potentially a few blades of grass we accidentally broke. Yeah, because it was very easy to just, like, go around, running around, and hold left click, and oops, there's just grass gone now. I guess nobody will notice, but there's grass gone there now. Oh, I'll take this question. Um... How did you get survival? How did you find out the slides format? How did you get on stage? We talked about this. The entire slide was about this. But to quickly summarize, we got survival because dying in a zone that puts you into survival um, actually keeps you in survival permanently until someone changes it for you. I found out the slides format myself because I found the the scripts for the for the for the computer craft computers just like open source. Because you can just like go ahead and open the tablet and then stop the currently running code and look at all the code and it's just literally pointing to a GitHub repository. And we got on stage through your trick rifle clipping. Uh, the taters we did not place. Again, I have no clue who placed the taters here. Uh, they were just here when we arrived yesterday to make sure we could actually do this. Uh, the printer booth has um, just a shower of XP that you can just stay at and get tons and tons of XP. Yeah, and there's also a few booths that literally just give you 30 levels because, you know, XP is exponential if you just stand in that, like, corner. You will just be slowly given XP, and it will get slower the longer you stay there. But there's there are certain boosts that literally just give you 30 levels, and you can like spam click that and get 200 levels. I have 119 levels right now. I 
I had, I think, I'm out at like 70 or 80 levels total over the course of like doing everything, and I had run out of them while duping. Yeah, I also had 200, and I True. ran out of those. Same. A fucking van. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, the van can stay. Uh, have you found the seed? No. Uh, the seed was something that we did not- we weren't interested in, we did not touch. Uh, because we don't have OP privileges, we can't really, like, do much shit. We only have survival mode, and we escalated that as far as we could. But, I do know that the seed is... Not relevant for generation. Oh, there we go. There it is in chat, <laughs> since people were asking for it. I noted it's not relevant to world generation, because the world is just generated from a PNG. Uh, Lemma, we won't forget to shill a 90G, don't worry about it. Good. See ya. See ya. What was the hardest shard to find? Um, it's hard to say, because a lot of the shards weren't particularly hard to find. They were just really funny or nearly unobtainable. Like, a few shards were, um, in areas where you couldn't, like, get them usually. Like, I know the EMI shard was weird because there was a whole thing that you had to do with, um, going in the exploration booth and then finding a secret door that you triggered somehow. But I believe the trigger mechanism for that does not work. So we just ended up finding a way to clip into it. That was, um, Game Guru's kid, kid's work, but... You know, we tested it, we, we actually found out that it works. Bing Bing Wahoo was not that bad. The secret shard was really not that bad in comparison to a lot of the other shit I had to go through. I'm gonna be honest. Like, it's... it's fucked, but it's not too fucked. It's a whole W at random hidden wall shard, but it's really not that bad. Uh, it's fine. People can take anything from the base, given that we don't really need it anymore. It's it's serve its due purpose. Yeah, I think I think after all of this, we have officially finished our conquest. Uh, Marco, do you want to take the the first one? I think yours, I just would do it. Yeah, sure. I'll do it. Uh, is there any other, any other weird stuff with mods that you've discovered during all of this? I can't say that, um, there was a lot of weird stuff that we discovered, just a lot of weird interactions between these mods. Because keep in mind, it's not like... 1 or 10 mods or 20 mods that cost us to get as much shit as we did. It was the culmination of having like 500 mods in one single pack. Because you know, you could find the fabulously optimized booth, and then you could use the peculiar pieces like... The peculiar pieces papers, and then you could also... Use the Itric rifle to clip into shit, and then you could also use the printer. Shout out to the printer, this would not have happened without the printer. It is probably the single most pivotal thing... That happened during all of this. I guess if um, there was one thing that we found that was really funny and probably is worth uh, fixing, like probably soon, is that if you put a package into a uh, printer, then the printer completely ignores the the contents of the package for the dupe process. So you can just like throw in something that would ordinarily take a very long amount of time into a package, then put it in a printer, and then it would take like literally ten seconds. Uh, what did we do with the radios? Uh, surprisingly, not too much. We had, we had obtained the Mario slider theme and the portal radio as jukebox, as like discs, and had played it on the main like twenty third radio everywhere. But that was about it. We had a secondary plan at the start of this, where we would discover every like obtainable radio like this and all redirect them to like the same station, just playing a cacophony of noise. But eventually, we had discovered so much more. That it just fell behind. 
It's really funny to look back on that now because that was our end goal. Our end goal was like, okay, we're going to like, when the event is about to close, we're going to just like point everything at the same station. It would be really funny to just listen to it all go down. But then we just kept finding shit and here we are giving a talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are we good with the questions? Is everyone done? I think, I think we're good. Oh, no. Uh -huh. All right. I'll wait. One more. All right. One more. How do you do the survival escape? Um, I can't tell you how it works exactly. Keep in mind, like, we have discovered this completely, like, just by interaction. What we did is, I believe, me and Zydra went in the utility booth, in the utility belt, um, cave. And I think it was first, um, at first, I think it was first Zydra that killed me. And then Zyder found out it worked and fuck around and fucked around with it, and then it was the other way around. It was also a bit weird because the that specific cave just sometimes switches you in and out, so you could only break blocks from specific angles. You had to find one such angle where you could actually die in survival. Uh, well, as regards to question count, we're fine on on that. Um, we have quite a lot of time allocated. <laughs> We're fine with being asked questions about this. It is as funny to us as it is to, to all of you. True. Oh, why is there a fucking book stuck on there, huh? <laughs> why is it just on there? It's just like standing there. Oh, someone's coming to fix it. Okay, thank you. How? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Try commands now? I mean... No, we don't have access to commands. We don't have it just yet. I don't know, hold on. What if I just, like, try typing a funny command? No, it doesn't give- I don't have the permission for it Yeah. Just yet? Yeah, here's the thing. We were thinking that that could be the end goal, but it turns out that, like, that's actually a lot harder because the slide system is not, like, as terribly secured as we figured it could be. Okay. If, uh... Just do, like, one more question and we'll move on. It's like, even if, even if it was SHA-1, we had, like, absolutely zero information about this secret, so we couldn't really do anything. A free goggles? We don't have a free goggles. I have no clue how you would obtain them. But no, we hadn't thought of that. Uh, Fiat Ducato, yes, you can ask a question. <laughs> You're a special member on the stage. You're allowed. That was your question? Alright, thanks, Fiat Ducato. Thank you, Thank Fiat. Thank you very much. Try commands in the slides? No, that's the thing. Um, the default key did not work, I'm fairly sure. I think I tried it. It didn't work. It didn't do anything. Alright. Let's say we're done. I, I, we're gonna move on to the actual talk now, which is something that was so important that we figured, um, that we figured it would be worth hijacking the whole stage to tell you. It's something that I've been working on for a long time, so you're gonna have to listen to me ramble for a little bit. You ever think about time? And you ever think about how just pointless the concept of time is? And how entirely fucked it is that, like, people have clocks and shit to measure, like, time? Like, we have- we have specific notations for just saying the sun is at some rotation in the sky. Why does that happen? Like, have you ever really sat down and thought about, like, the fact that people really fucking just have clocks? Like, go outside and look at the sun. What the fuck are you thinking? And, like, you're thinking, like, okay, people are gonna schedule shit around this? Like, we're gonna have you required to look at time? What were they thinking with this one? Well, the I hate you. <laughs> Who punched me? And 
the thing about time is that you are forced to participate in no matter what you do in society. This is just a constant of life, and you just have to fucking comply with it. Why is that a real thing? And, like, the, it perplexes me. It's perplexed me all my life that people have all this shit built up, and all it really achieves is you get to be more stricter to people. What is the point? Like, really? We invented clocks. We invented alarm clocks to make you wake up before a time? We already had that in our bodies. That's called the human clock. You can just wake up at a time if that's an okay time to wake up at. Like, what does, like, any of like, this mean? Hold on, Jill. What, are you just, like, saying to completely, what? like, remove time and just, like... Only go off yeah. of biological okay. clocks. No, this this entire thing was set at a time. What do you mean? We literally announced a time, and I do yeah. mean time called odd That's time ridiculous. on the clocks for we this event. Do that. No, the like, clocks are everywhere in the I world. They're like. there for a reason. No, you need to. You're fucking wrong. You're <laughs> wrong. I'm going to die. <laughs> Dude. Okay, that's fucking it. I've had it talk? with you. I've had it with you. You're yeah. going to the void. What? Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? I sure Is it done? He was recording that. It... Oh. Hooray! Good talk. Yay! Thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> it was really fucking fun coming up with all of this. I hope you understand. <laughs> it was so incredibly fun. Alright, there's a few new people. I'm gonna hand out... Oh, there are clocks being sent down there. You don't fucking do that. You don't fucking do that. Uh, I'm gonna I hand out a few... I have a book here named days. Secret. It has some weird coordinates on it. Want me to send it your way? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know what his deal is, I just have it. Here, uh, more fucking base teleport papers in case you need any. You can sure. just, like, use these and teleport to the base and find out what it looks like. The last time I did that, I literally ended up in a wall, so... <laughs> I have not fine, that's no big deal. Um... You better. But that ain't paying the bills, so I'm selling clocks! Okay, there we go. Blaha's replication. Yeah! There we go, finally! Hey, do you have a command block here? I need a command block, I wanna try something. Uh, there's- there's some over here, you can grab them. Okay, uh, like an item command block. Do you have a, an, uh, an item command block yet, or, uh... I'm on computer. No? There's no item command blocks? 